Hello everybody, happy Sabbath. happy Sabbath. Welcome. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit. Reading today is our brother David. And the precept that we're going to address today, prove all things. We said last week when we did the lesson about seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, that there was a way to do it. There was a way to seek the Lord. And it was in His Word, by the reading of His Word, and gaining wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of His Word. So when you're seeking Him by reading His Word, what you need to do now is you need to prove in His Word all things, all doctrines, to find out which is the one that came from our Heavenly Father. So the way to seek the kingdom of God first in His righteousness is by proving all things in His Word. And we're going to show you how to do that. Then next week we're going to be live in Carrier Mills, Illinois for two months. And next week we're going to, we're going to do a lesson on how to study God's Word. And then we're going to go into our Messiah, Christ Jesus, for the next eight or nine weeks after that. So these are all cumulative lessons, precept upon precept, on how to come to Christ. And today, we're going to deal with proving all things, proving your faith, proving the doctrine that you choose to stand in as you worship God. Are you sure your doctrine is pleasing to Him? Are you sure it's not one of these traditions of men that the Bible talks about that will lead you to the lake of fire? What we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to know how your doctrine is from God and not from man. And we're going to start this off in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. Welcome again to the Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. 1 Thessalonians 5. And Brother David, whenever you're ready to start off this precept, brother, we're going to pick it up in verse 14. 1 Thessalonians 5. And verse 14. Whenever you're ready, brother. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, and comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak, and be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So that's the way we're supposed to conduct ourselves in charity or in love, those fruits of the Spirit. And we're dealing with that right now on Friday Night Lights. Go ahead, brother. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And we're rejoicing, and we're praying without ceasing, and in everything we're giving thanks to God for all things, because all good things come from our Heavenly Father above, in whom there is no variableness of turning. He doesn't change. He's the same God that gave our Messiah to mankind back in the beginning of man. And he doesn't change his message. He doesn't change his ways. He is pure and absolute holiness. And he's showing us how to be so we can recover ourselves. Pray without ceasing and everything giving thanks. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. So that we can do this. Go ahead, brother. Quench not the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit of God. Go ahead. Despise not prophesying. Don't despise any prophesying. Somebody's coming to you and they're talking to you about doctrine that they say is coming from God on how to gain entrance into His kingdom. You're not going to despise what you're hearing. You're going to listen to it and you're going to receive it in another place where it says with readiness of mind. Go ahead, brother. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And then you're going to prove all things. Everything concerning God and concerning the life in general, we're commanded to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Good according to God's word. Go ahead, brother. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And if it even looks like it could be wicked, we're supposed to stay away from it. If there's even some contention that it's a wicked doctrine, Truly contentious that it's a wicked doctrine. What would be contentious that it's a wicked doctrine? Christmas not being the birth of Jesus, but the birth of a pagan God? 
If it even looks evil or wicked, we're to abstain from it or get away from it. So Christmas, that contention that it's not from God, that it's paganism, that it's not pleasing to God, you're to prove that, whether or not that's true, and if it even looks like it's wicked or true, you're supposed to stay away from it. Go ahead, brother. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good, according to God's word. And we'll make that plain. Let's go to 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter. We'll make that plain as we go along today. 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter. How do we abstain from all appearance of evil, sisters and brothers? There's only one sure way. By keeping the law as it is written. Let's look at some examples. 2 Kings 23 and verse 21, brother. 23 and 21. Go ahead. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. As it is written in the book of this covenant. A lot of people don't realize. They say, oh, the covenant is just the Ten Commandments. No, the Ten Commandments is like a table of contents into the covenant. The Passover is part of the covenant. And at this time, they found a copy of the book of the law, and they were going to keep the law as it was written in the book of the covenant, or the law of Moses, and they were going to keep the Passover unto the Lord as it is written, not as they think it should be done. Go ahead, brother. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all of the days of the kings of Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Judah. Go ahead. But in the eighteenth year of the king Josiah, wherein this Passover was holding to the Lord in Jerusalem, moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, and the wizards, and images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. So he put away all the familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols because God commanded not to make any graven images, any likeness of anything in the sky, in the earth, the earth beneath, any images of anything. It was forbidden to make and call it a God. You know, like the white Jesus that we have today and like the statues of Mary and all the saints that God commanded us not to do that. Well, they found the book of the law where it was written not to do that, and they did away with all that, and with all the abominations that were going on in the land of Judah and Jerusalem. All the homosexualities and the liars and the thieves and all of that junk, that's an abomination in God's eyes, they did away with it. According to what was written in the book of the law. Go ahead, brother. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul, and with all his might, according to the law of Moses, neither after him there arose any like him. And never a king before him or after him. Let's go to 1 Kings, the second chapter. 1 Kings, the second chapter. 1 Kings 2. 1 Kings 2. The Lord didn't go through all this great pain to give us all these examples of what happens when you keep the law and what happens when you break the law to bring Jesus 2,000 years ago and say the law has been done away with. Well, what about all them people that kept the law for 4,000 years and broke the law? What, did we reverse all that? All them cases come back up for trial, so to speak? No. This law was never done away with. 1 Kings 2 and verse 1, brother. 2 and 1. Go ahead. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go all the way of the earth. Be thou strong, therefore and show thyself a man. Be strong and show yourself a man. Put aside the temptations and that little, that little, oh, woe is me crap. All that little junk, that feeling sorry for yourself, that selfish and self-centeredness. Put all that aside and be a man already. Go ahead, brother. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whither thou whithersoever thou turnest thyself. One of the ways that God gives you a definition of what a man is, a man is one that conducts himself according to the word of God, regardless of the personal consequences. A man doesn't seek revenge. A man doesn't stoop to pettiness. A man stands in the gap in righteousness and raises his family accordingly. 
And then he conducts his house in a way to make sure that those laws, commandments, statutes, and judgments that are in force and that are laid down for his family's conduct are enforced and not broken. That's God's definition of a man. Let's go to Joshua, the first chapter. As it is written in the book of the law, everybody likes to go to Joshua and they like to quote, oh, but it's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, let's see what Joshua said was serving the Lord. Joshua 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. 1 and verse 6. Joshua 1 and verse 6. Go ahead, brother. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Uh-huh. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand, nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He's laying out how to serve the Lord, according to what was written in the law of Moses and the prophets. Go ahead, brother. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. All that is written therein. That pertains to you. Obviously, if you were under the old covenant and you had a daughter and your time of separation as a mother was over and you had to take a certain sacrifice to the priest to become clean again. Well, if you weren't the mother that had just had that daughter and your time of separation was over and you're a man, you don't have to worry about that law until you have a family and now it's time to make sure your wife is doing the proper oblations and sacrifices to God. So you only deal with the laws that pertain to you in your situation or laws that may be broken, that are broken in front of you in your situation. Go ahead, brother. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. If you keep his commandments, because it's in the keeping of his commandments that Joshua says your way will prosper, and you will have good success. So as for him and his house, he's going to serve the Lord. How's he going to do that? By keeping the commandments that Jesus gave to Moses. Let's go to Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. Luke 2. Yeah, I said Jesus gave to Moses. We have lessons on that. I'm getting tired of explaining that. I'm, I think I'm going to stop explaining that and let the questions start coming again. Luke 2 and verse 22, brother. 2 and 22. Whenever you get there, brother, go ahead. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord. It's the Lord that gave it to Moses. It's the Lord's law, not Moses' law. Moses didn't make stuff up. Moses got it from God and taught the people. Go ahead and continue, brother. As it is written in the law of the Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. To offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So we see it's not the law of Moses. It's the law of the Lord. We haven't even been in this lesson ten minutes and we're already proving some vital things for salvation. Let's continue. Let's go to Proverbs, the eighth chapter. Proverbs, the eighth chapter. Proverbs 8, Proverbs the 8th chapter, let's find out how we seek the Lord, Proverbs 8 and verse 17, brother, 8 and 17, go ahead. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. In other words, we're not waiting until our roof is caving on us. We're seeking the Lord early. We're not waiting for some great tribulation to come along. We're starting to see some things in God's Word. We're professing to be Christians. We start proving what we're seeing in God's Word. 
We start proving the teaching we're hearing if we want to be hot, not cold. Or not lukewarm, rather. We profess to be Christians. We're going to church on Sunday. Prove the teaching that you're hearing on Sunday with the Word of God. Does it line up? When they talk about mom being in heaven, does that line up with the Scriptures? That's what we're supposed to be proving. The doctrine that we're hearing. Go ahead, brother. You done with 17? Yes. So we seek Him early. We seek Him early by proving His Word if we profess to be Christians. Let's go to Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. And one verse, brother, verse 16. 34 and verse 16. Go ahead, brother. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. We're going to seek him early. We're going to seek him out of his word. Let's continue. Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans 10. Romans 10. We seek Him through His Word. And it's got to be from His Holy Written Word. We know that God took holy men that were moved by the Holy Spirit to receive His message to write it down for mankind. And that's how the Lord gives us His salvation. Through His Word. Let's make this plain. Romans 10 and verse 14. Brother, go ahead. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So how are you going to call on the Lord if you haven't believed on Him? And how are you going to believe if you haven't heard about Him? And how are you going to hear about Him if nobody teaches you, you're just going to go blindly following whatever someone is teaching you to do, and it's going to become part of your ritual, but you'll have no idea why you're doing it, or who you're doing it for, or who you're praying to. So how can you believe on someone that you haven't heard about, and how can you hear about someone, this mighty God, when no one has taught you? Because that, oh, I don't need a teacher, the Holy Ghost to teach me, is one of the biggest lies ever told by Satan. Man has got to teach you because God taught man to teach each other. Skip down to 17 and continue, brother. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So then your belief has to come by the Word of God when it comes to salvation. Let's continue. Let's go to Acts, the 8th chapter. Acts, the 8th chapter. Acts 8, Acts 8, and brother, let's pick it up at verse 29, 8 and verse 29, let's see an example of that, go ahead, brother. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. So now the Spirit told Philip to join himself to this chariot that was sitting there on the side of the road, go ahead. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? So Philip's listening to him, and he's reading out of the book of Isaiah. And he asks him, Do you understand what you're reading, brother? And look what this brother says. Go ahead. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? Oh, and then Philip said, But don't worry, the Holy Ghost will teach you. No. He said, How can I understand, except somebody should show me what this means? That's what he's saying. Except some man should guide me. Go ahead. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of that scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and, a, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. So they're in the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and he's just reading. So Philip asks him, you understand what you're reading? He goes, how could I understand this? I don't know what this means. I need somebody to show this to me. 
So Philip picks it up in Isaiah 53 and he starts teaching this brother. Because Philip's got understanding. Go ahead, brother. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speakest the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? So now the eunuch is getting some questions answered. He's got questions as Philip is teaching him. That's what Bible studies are involved. You get a lesson. You're receiving what you're hearing. You're not despising the prophesying. You're listening to what you're getting. You're going into the scriptures to see if it's lining up. So that's exactly what they're doing here. They're doing it all according to the way that God said it should be done. Go ahead, brother. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And Philip takes a look at Isaiah 53. He's got understanding and he starts teaching Jesus right out of the Old Covenant. Go ahead. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? See, this eunuch had some understanding, knew that he had to get baptized. But he wasn't sure what he was getting baptized into. He didn't know what he needed to do. So he's reading and he's asking. And somebody comes along and starts teaching him what's needed for salvation. Go ahead. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So now right then and there, Philip went ahead and baptized the eunuch into the covenant. Let's go to Isaiah, the 28th chapter. We're not going to touch on this much. We're going to read one verse. We're going to deal with this in depth next week when we learn how to study God's holy written word. Live in Carrier Mills, Illinois. Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. We're going to actually add a couple verses to you. Pick this up in verse 10. We're just going to do a little bit of reading. 28 and 10. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So when you're studying the Word of God, precept is always, one precept's always going into another precept. You talk about what's a live soul, what happens when man becomes a live soul. And then you go into the Scriptures, and then the Scriptures always, from there, go into another precept. Okay, well let's find out what happens when that live soul dies. And then one precept goes into another. All right, well, this is what happens when a soul becomes alive. Well, now we see what happens when it dies. Where do you go when you die? So then you start looking at precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You're taking the precept. You're staying on the precept. You're going from one book to another book in the Bible, staying on that precept topic. And you're reading the Scripture straight through. You're not starting in verse 30, reading the end of verse 30, and then going back and piecing it together with the front of verse 5, saying that's golden, that's what God said. You're reading it straight through. So precepts upon precept. Precepts are built upon precept for gaining understanding. And it's line upon line, reading it straight through, going here a little and there a little to the different books, staying on that precept. Go ahead, brother. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. With stammering, lip, stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. The only language you need to understand is the one that you are fluent in. God scattered the nations. He scattered them throughout the whole world by dividing the languages. And he speaks every one of them. And he understands every one of them. And he's given us salvation in every one of them. Whatever your studies are, whatever your study habits are to get more understanding, by all means, do that. But all you need to do is be fluent in God's Word in the language you speak to gain salvation. Go ahead, brother. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. And he said, If you do it this way, you're going to gain salvation. That's the refreshing. That's the rest wherein you cause the weary to rest. The kingdom of God. By learning wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. But they wouldn't listen. So this is what happens when you don't listen to it that way. Go ahead, brother. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, and line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. And going and falling backward and being broken and snared and taken is you didn't want to hear the way the Lord said to get the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 
So that very wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you didn't want to hear is going to judge you at the appointed time. Let's continue. Let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. And we will deal with that in depth next week, live from Carrier Mills. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. In studying that way, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, it takes the false prophets and it, it, and it exposes them on the table. Because they're not teaching that way. So when you're not teaching that way, you're not getting the understanding of God's Word. And there's somewhere along the line in your teaching, the Word of God is going to prove you a liar if you're a false prophet. So we have to be looking out for those false prophets. Matthew 7 and verse 13, brother, go ahead. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go with it. That's why we have the need to prove all things, because we want to enter in at the straight gate, not the wide gate. That's any, any which way you can go ahead and serve God. Serve Him by your traditions. If you live here, you live across the country, serve Him by those traditions. It doesn't matter. In God's eyes, yes, it does. And that's what we're showing you today. Go ahead, brother. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Few there be that find it, because few want to understand and know it. Because it takes time, and it takes diligence, and it takes discipline to do the studying required to be pleasing in God's eyes. you got to first understand how to walk, and then do it to be pleasing in God's eyes. Not just carry the book to a worship service and sing a few hymns and listen to some man with some warm and fuzzy, great orientation make you feel all good about yourself and send yourself home with a smile on your face. That's not going to get you across the street in God's kingdom. Go ahead, brother. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Oh, praise Jesus. Praise be to God. Thou shalt not surely die. Go ahead, brother. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Uh -huh. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And you'll know them by their fruits. Do they keep the Sabbath day? Do they keep the feast days? Do they keep God's dietary law? All these things that God said are still good in His kingdom that we can read from the beginning all the way into the Father's kingdom are still good. Do they keep those? Or do they go against the Word of God with traditions of men? Go ahead, brother. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Look what this verse is saying. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruits. It's impossible. It's a good tree. And neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. That's why we're given righteous judgment within the congregation. To monitor ourselves. To police ourselves. To keep us on that straight and narrow. Go ahead, brother. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And that's talking about at the appointed time, that second death. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. And notice, this is Jesus that's talking to us here through the word of Matthew. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Brother, let's pick it up at verse 11. Matthew 24. Remember, we're dealing with bewaring of these false prophets because we're proving all things. We want to make God's kingdom. We want to know everything pleasing to Him because we don't want to leave nothing out and take any chances. So we want to know who these false prophets are so we can stay away from them. We can beware of their doctrine. Like Jesus said, the, the doctrine of the scribes and the Pharisees. 24 and verse 11, brother, go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many, because iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. At the appointed time, people are going to be dropping like flies from the true church. Go ahead, brother. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that shall endure in God's doctrine, regardless of the personal consequences, until the end shall be saved. Go ahead, brother. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Yes, sir. We'll be wearing of these false prophets. Skip to 23 and continue, brother. If there be any man that shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ 
or there, believe it not. Uh -huh. For there shall arise false, false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So he's warning us again about these false prophets and these, these ones that are going to saw the Messiah here, all these false trumpet blowers, if you will. Jesus is back. He's warning us about that again, because if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. But it's not possible, because the very elect is going into the Word, and they know the signs that need to happen before Jesus returns. Oh, Jesus is back. He can't be back. The abomination of desolation didn't go into any temple to stop any sacrifices yet. That's not Jesus over there. The very elect are in the book. They're studying the Word, and they're doing what God is opening their eyes to. They're not just a hearer of the Word. They're a doer also. Let's continue. Let's go to Exodus, the 32nd chapter. So we're bewaring of false prophets. And we're doing it because we have understanding that we can lose our salvation. You can't just come to Christ and call upon His name. And He, oh, you're forgiven. And now just go about your life any way you want to. And you're eschewing for salvation. You can have your name erased from God's kingdom. Exodus 32 and brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 32. 32 and 32, brother, go ahead. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Moses intercessing for the nation of Israel again. This time he tells the Lord, if you don't want to forgive Israel this time the way they fell short, Lord, then blot me out of the book. Moses had understanding of the book of life. You have to be in this book of life on judgment day in order to make God's kingdom. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And the Lord said, No, Moses, whoever sins against me, he's the one I'm blotting out of my book. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. Revelation, the third chapter. This is why we're looking and proving God's word, making sure we're identifying false prophets, making sure our family can see the false teaching can see the truth in God's Word so they don't get tripped off. Because salvation, this is important, sisters and brothers. This isn't a game. This life here, you can live to be 100 years old, and that's a flash in the pan, and it doesn't mean anything in the overall scheme of forever. Revelation 3 and 1 verse, brother, verse 5. 3 and 5. Go ahead. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. If you overcome, in other words, if you keep God's commandments to the best of your ability until either Jesus returns or you sleep or you die. Go ahead, brother. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Isn't that something? You get that white clothing, that raiment of righteousness. Let's go to Psalm, the 69th chapter. Psalm, the 69th chapter. Psalm 69. Psalm 69, and we're going to read one verse. Verse 28, brother. 69 and 28. Go ahead. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with righteousness. If your book is not, if your name is not in the book of life, it's not written with the righteous. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living. You're a dead man walking if you're not in that book of life. And there's only one way to get into that book of life, sisters and brothers, to come under the shed blood of Christ Jesus. Let's go back to Revelation, the 13th chapter. Revelation, the 13th chapter. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And brother, we'll pick it up at verse 5. Revelation 13 and verse 5. Go ahead. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So this is that three and a half year tribulation. Forty and two months. Three and a half years, not seven. Go ahead, brother. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. This is the abomination of desolation that Daniel the prophet spoke of and wrote about. Go ahead, brother. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. 
and the power was given over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Yes, sir. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship the abomination of desolation. Go ahead. Whose names are not written in the book of life. Whose of names Lord. are not written in the book of life. Your name has to be in the book of life or you don't get salvation. Go ahead, brother. Of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And that book belongs to Christ Jesus. And he's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world because when Adam and Eve sinned and brought death into the world, now we needed some perfect sacrifice. And Jesus knew his time was up then. Let's go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. So we've got all these false prophets running around, sisters and brothers, and they're trying to deceive everybody. And if it were possible, they could deceive the very elect. So if we want to be the very elect, what is it that we have to do? Well, 1 John 4 and verse 1 is where we start. 4 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And Jesus has already warned us about those false prophets that are in the world now. What we need to do is we need to try the spirits to see whether they are of God or not. Well, how do we try the spirit to see if the spirit that we're receiving in a teaching or a doctrine is from God or not? We've got an example in Acts, the 17th chapter. Acts, the 17th chapter. Acts 17. Acts 17. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Sisters and brothers, does the doctrine or the teaching mirror the Scriptures? Do the Scriptures take the precept and interpret it themselves? Or do I need to reach for something to make the Scripture plain? Acts 17 and verse 10, brother, go ahead. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So they went into where the convocations were kept, where they could meet fellow servants. Go ahead, brother. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So they received the word or the doctrine that they were being taught with all readiness of mind. In other words, they wanted to hear it, they're excited to hear it. Maybe this is something I don't understand. And they're going in and they're listening to the teaching. And believe me, sisters and brothers, well, believe me on this, but don't believe me when it comes to the Word. Ask me to read it to you. But believe me on this. After you've been seeking truth for a while, the lies are very easy to fall off the table after a while. Some of them, they come up, you know, and two minutes into a teaching, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But you got to get to that point. you got to prove all things with God's Word. So you're receiving it with readiness of mind, and you're searching the Scriptures daily to see if what you're hearing is true. Do the Scriptures line up with the precept that's being taught, showing that the brother that's teaching the precept has understanding of God's Word and has done his work? Or is it somebody just standing up there after a couple minutes He's completely opposite of the scriptures that he's telling you, that he's reading to you and trying to explain to you. This is how we prove false doctrine. We listen to it. We receive it. We want to know if it's true. We go in the book with an open mind because when you do that, sometimes the understanding you have is wrong. And through someone's teaching, when you're in the book and you're reading and you've got an open mind, and you're letting the book explain the precept and the teaching, you see, oh my goodness, I got it wrong. This brother's right. But it's all got to come through searching the scriptures and letting them interpret themselves. Go ahead, brother. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men not a few. And when you do it that way, many will believe if they want to know the truth. Because the Bible doesn't lie. Only man does. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter. This is why we're going into the book and we're proving it the way we are. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 32. 
God went through great pains throughout the history of mankind to make sure that His Word lined up perfect from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. By moving men's hearts to become obedient and to write down in books what they did so that God in this end of times could compile the books He wanted us to have in every language so we can learn how to be with Him forever on the right side of the kingdom. And in doing that, He was very specific in His instructions not to add or take away from what He had written. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 32, brother, go ahead. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. You're not going to add or take away from it. Let's go to Proverbs, the 30th chapter. We're just going to read two places. We're not going to go all over. We're trying to keep this lesson around an hour. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. Go ahead. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Every word of God is pure. Let God be true and every man a liar. Every word of God is pure and He is a shield through His word unto them that put their trust in Him. So, don't do this. Go ahead, brother. Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Enough said. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the second chapter. 2 Timothy, the second chapter. 2 Timothy 2. A brother like me, the only thing you need me for is to put the lesson together and to show you where to go. And then just to make plain a couple things that aren't really clear, that the Bible makes clear. That's all you need me for. Some of these lessons, all i got to do is say, okay, I put it together, now let's go to 2 Timothy. When we're done here, we'll go to Proverbs. When we're done there, we'll go to Revelation. Okay, read it. Done reading? Okay, let's go to the next place. That's how much the Word of God will explain itself if you really want to know. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 14, brother. 2 and 14. Go ahead. Of these things, put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Uh -huh. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, look at this here in verse 15. Well, 14, these things put them in remembrance, talking about teaching them about Christ and about keeping the commandments and about how to act with each other, one mind, one spirit, and all this. Not to words that have no profit, but study to show thyself approved unto God. Let's take out the commas here. How do we study to show ourselves to be approved unto God? Study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how you become pleasing in God's eyes. That commas in there to say that if you're going to study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth, you're going to be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. That's in the proper English, the way you form sentences. Where the comma's at and where the comma ends, if you take that out, that sentence should just complete itself, just like it does right there. Study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how you study to show yourself approved unto God. You rightly divide His word then you're a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed when he returns one day. You won't be one of the ones if you're still alive screaming for the rocks to hide you from the wrath of the Lamb. You'll be saying, come Lord Jesus, come. Let's continue. Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Proverbs, the 12th chapter. Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12, and brother, we're going to pick this up in verse 15. 12 and verse 15. Go ahead. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Always seek wise counsel. Always seek wise counsel. Why? Because a fool, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but you might have it wrong. you got a bunch of brothers and sisters in the Word. You bounce that off of each other. 
and you stick with the scripture. And I'm talking about absolutes here, sisters and brothers. I'm not talking about the endless and useless genealogies and the stuff that's not absolute. You stick with the word and you seek wise counsel. Does this really mean this? Sometimes I'm sitting down with a lesson and I'll come across the scripture and I'll go, man, that fits right here, but wait a minute, let me read this. Oh, and then I'll have to read a chapter before, a chapter after, and then I'm still not sure. Then I'm on the phone. Yo, brother, this is how I want to use this scripture in my lesson. Umpty, one, two, three, A, B, C. And I'll either get, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that could be. Or, well, you know, I looked at that and I'm not quite sure. Or, no, brother, that's not what it's talking about. Let me take you here, here, and here and show you. Everything according to the Word of God. Seeking counsel when we're not sure. Not leaning on our own understanding. Go to the 27th chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs 27. And we're going to read one verse and we're going to skip. 27 and verse 9, brother. Go ahead. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so that the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Hearty counsel is a sweetness. It's a sweetness, man. It's like somebody's got that sweet tooth and you give them a good piece of some good Brazilian chocolate or something like that. Oh my goodness, man. That's what a man's friend by hearty counsel does. He lifts a man up spiritually. He, gets, he goes and he keeps you on the same page down that straight and narrow. Skip to 17 and continue, bro. Iron sharpens <coughs> iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. That's what Friday Night Lights is all about. Having an interactive convocation where the average churchgoer can have a say and read some scriptures and be edified. Let's continue. Let's go to Romans, the 14th chapter. We have one place after this. Romans 14. Romans 14. We're always seeking wise counsel, sisters and brothers, and it's always in the Word of God so that we can walk together in faith. Romans 14 and 1 verse, brother, verse 5. 14 and 5. Go ahead. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And every man has to be fully persuaded in his own heart or you're walking in someone else's faith. This is why you have to prove all things for yourself. It's not about the traditions passed on by your parents. It's not about how your siblings do it. It's not about that you've always done it that way your whole life since you remember being a little one. And that's how mom and dad always raised you for the past 65 years or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We prove all things and we hold fast to that which is good. And we have to be persuaded in our own minds because we hold our own salvation in our hands. Not what the person next to you is doing. So you have to prove all things to be thoroughly convinced that you're pleasing in God's eyes. Revelation, the 22nd chapter, and this will be it. And this is how you do that. According to the Word of God, without adding and without taking away. Revelation 22 and verse 18, brother. 22 and verse 18. Bring us home, brother David. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You add unto this book, you're going to get the plagues written in this book. And this, when it's saying this book, it's talking about the compilation of books known as the Bible. Not the book of Revelation. Go ahead, brother. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, or from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. And if you take away from the words of this book, of the prophecy, God's going to take your name out of the book of life. And your name's got to be in that book of life. We proved that in this lesson. That's part of proving all things, is getting your name in the book of life. That's how you get your name in the book of life. By proving all things and walking according to what's pleasing in God's eyes and abstaining from any appearance of evil. So sisters and brothers, 
Prove all things. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Sisters and brothers, as always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's Word, and we hope that you got something from these scriptures.